Welcome in, Brian Edwards, MajorWager.com. Let's talk some Week 12 college football. Uh, by my count, we have nine postponements, several of them coming within the hour. Uh, we've got Charlotte Marshall, USF Navy, um, Louisiana, or formerly known UL Lafayette, Billy Napier squad. They were playing an FCS team, I want to say Central Arkansas, um, but that is postponed, but but it's Lafayette with the COVID outbreak, and they are, what, 7-1, and one, if I'm not mistaken? Um, SMU Houston, UNLV Colorado State, Wyoming Utah State, Miami Georgia Tech, Wake Forest Duke, which I was going to be on Wake Forest minus four and a half, damn it, and Ole Miss A&M. All right. Um, let's talk some picks, okay? So, excuse me, uh, officially for like, you know, my picks that I do on my website, Vegas Insider, we can only do sides or totals, We, but, you know, I can't do first halves, first quarters, team totals, et cetera. But I, I just want to tell you how, and I, I think we've talked about this before. I know I've been writing about it a lot. Um, if you had to name two units, either side of the ball in all of college football right now that you can trust the most, that are the best? Easy question, right? Give you a second to think about it. Got your answer? Yeah. Florida's offense and Alabama's offense. And let's see. Right now, I think Florida was like 31, 31 and a half. They're at Vanderbilt this week. Alabama, uh, I believe, is 30 at last look an hour or two ago. Um, you don't have to eat all that chalk and worry about their defenses, which, by the way, Alabama and Florida's defenses, not as salty as normal. I mean, maybe the worst Florida defense in three decades. Um, but I, I still hope it'll continue to get better. Um, and Alabama, this is their worst defense probably since Saban's first year when he went Six and six and beat Colorado and Shreveport to go seven and six. And ever since then, they've just been a national title contender year after flipping, flipping year. When are you going to retire, Saves? You know what? When you might retire? When we steamroll y'all's ass, by the way, in Atlanta. And yeah, that's a little self serving. You see the Gator, in the back, Gator stuff in the background. But um, I became convinced. It was the it was before Tua got hurt against Tennessee in that game. I want to say it was late October. Um, I became convinced that LSU was the team and they were going to beat Alabama before Tua got hurt. And obviously he played that game. He wasn't a hundred percent. We all, all know that. Um, but it wasn't going to, it didn't matter. Burrow could have scored 65 that game. Um, as long as Florida stays healthy, I don't think anybody's going to outscore us. We're a problem. We are a problem for Bama, Clemson, Ohio State, Ohio State. <clears throat> How many daddies do I have on Ohio State's face? Just two? Two blowouts? Two blowouts. Um, Florida's a problem without Kyle Pitts or with Kyle Pitts. Who's probably the best tight end in college football since what? Tony Gonzalez? Kellen Winslow, senior, not junior, that loser. Ooh. Ooh. And if you if you don't know why I got the heebie jeebies there, well, don't do it. Don't do a Google search on what Kellen Winslow Jr. is up to these days. Oh my gosh. So you can bet on Alabama and Florida's offenses without having to lay 30 plus points. Uh, and this is what I've been doing. And if you follow me on Twitter at Vegas B. Evers, I mean, I was tweeting it all day before the Arkansas game last week. I was tweeting all day that Florida in the first half over 20 and a half, I believe my tweet said, is just sitting there looking real juicy like a 14 ounce ribeye with mashed potatoes and gravy and a really cold Budweiser. And it was. And it was easy breezy. And team totals are not out. I'm coming to you Wednesday right now about 3.25 p.m. Eastern. 
team totals are not out yet, so I don't know what Florida's team total is going to be. But if Florida's team total in the first half at Vanderbilt is 28 points or fewer, it will be one of my biggest bets of the season. And I shall explain why. Um, where is my... Oh, no. Why not have my... Oh, gosh. Sorry. I hate when I do this live. Um, darn it. I've got to... Uh, i got to get there. Hold on. Be there in a sec. Hate when I do that. do this live. But I got to get to my picks write ups where I got all my stats. And here we are. Okay. So the, well, like I said, I like the over for the game at 68. And I'll explain that. But again, if that team total in the first half is 28 or fewer, that's the Thunder play. Okay. Uh, I'm going to give you some factoids on my write up. On over 68. Okay, so the over is 5-1 and one overall for the Gators. Combined scores have averaged 75.8 points per game. Uh, they've had 86 in a game. They've had 79. They've had 72. They've had 98. Um, the over is also on a 3-1 and one run for Vandy, which in, their, in Vandy's three home games, they've given up 41 apiece to both LSU and South Carolina. And they gave up 54 to Ole Miss. How many do how many you think Florida's going to score? They gave up 38 to Kentucky last week. What was, what was Kentucky's highest scoring game before last week? Before last week. Let's see. They didn't play any non-conference games, so we can't. Let's see. Kentucky had scored 13 against Auburn. Well, they had scored 41, but we know how bad Ole Miss's defense is. And that was an overtime game. So they had, what, 35 uh, uh, in regulation. Um, Mississippi State, or I'm sorry, they scored 24 on Mississippi State. They scored 34 on Tennessee, but they had two pick sixes that game. So that's really 20. Um, that was, yeah, against Tennessee at Neyland. They scored 10 against Mizzou, three against Georgia, but 38 against Vandy. So, I mean, Florida scores 70 if they feel like it on Saturday. So if the team total for the game is 48 or fewer, that's another overplay. And if the team total in the first quarter is 14 or fewer, preferably 13 and a half or fewer, that's another overplay. Although the first quarter kind of makes me scared because, you know, you might only get three possessions when you get a holding penalty or something. That makes me a little nervous. But the team total... In the first half for the Florida Gators at Vanderbilt this Saturday, noon Eastern in Music City, Tennessee. If the team total on the Gators is 28 or fewer in the first half, I mean, you drop the hammer. You drop the hammer, one of your biggest bets of the year. Um, and so, but let me talk a little bit more about just in terms of the over 68, which is not as big a play as the one I just mentioned. But Vandy's offense has shown some life here lately. They hadn't scored more than 21 points all year, except for the Ole Miss game, and they scored 35 on Kentucky last week. And despite giving up 35 to Vandy, Kentucky going into this week, its defense is still, uh, their scoring defense is still number 24 in the nation. And despite the 35-point output, they're only giving up an average of 21.3 points per game. So that's a quality defense that Vandy scored 35 on. So Vandy's going to score some points against the Gators this week. Gators are going to score as many as they flip and want. We know this. Um, you know, even without Pitts, Keon Zipperer is back up. Two touchdown catches last week. Trask, video game numbers, 28-3, to TDI and T ratio. Um, I also like Florida minus 18 in the first half. So it's a, it's a, a, a boomer bust type of strategy. And I'm not saying lay the 31 and a half on Florida because the back door will be open for Vandy to get some late scoring. But in the first half, I think Florida scores at least 35. I mean, they had 38 on Georgia at halftime. I mean, we might who, who knows, man. We're gonna we're gonna score a lot of points. A lot of points. And sure, there's always, oh, if this guy get if Trask gets hurt, you know what? I am positive we'd score 28 with Emory Jones playing quarterback in the first half against Vandy. 
Knock on wood. It's going to be my boy Trask. Um, and we're coming for you, Bama. We are coming for you. Alabama might score 50 or 60 on Florida. They got to score that many to beat us because we are definitely going to hang 50 on their face. Can't wait. Um, all right, what else? All right, let me give you some good underdog stats. And you know what? I might have this. This should be up before Eastern Michigan kicks off tonight. Stat of the week, Eastern Michigan, by the way, plus seven against Toledo tonight. In its last 30 games as an underdog, Eastern Michigan, 26-3-1 and one against the spread. Boom. That's a play for me tonight. Um, and we don't have that impressive of underdog stats for Kansas State, but we do have a lot of reasons to like K-State this week. A, they're in Ames and they are an 11-point underdog. Okay. K-State has had two weeks to prepare. Iowa State was in a one-possession battle last week. In the last 12 years, Kansas State is 11-1 and one straight up against Iowa State. The last time that Iowa State beat K-State by more than 11 points, which is the spread, which is why it's relevant here, was 2005. And there's no divisions in Big 12. They play every single year. Okay. Um, only one of the last six Kansas State-Iowa State game has been – games have been decided by more than five points. And that was last year when K-State won 27 to 17. Okay. K-State's been a double digit underdog three times this year. Three and zero against the spread with two outright wins. Okay. The the non outright win was a 20 to 18 loss to Oklahoma State two weeks ago at home. They were 14 point dogs. They led 12 nothing in inter at uh, intermission. And by the way, they're playing without their stud tight end who might be back this week, maybe. Um, so they led 12 zip at halftime. Oak State goes ahead 13 to 12, 632 left in the fourth quarter. K-State's in the red zone. They fumble 85 yard scoop and score for Oklahoma State, go up 20 to 12. K-State answers with a touchdown. Two point conversion fails. They lose by two, but they cover by 12. All right, here's the underdog stats for K-State. Last 23 games as a double-digit underdog going back to late in the 2009 season. Kansas State is 17-6 and six against the spread. Okay, going back to 2007, as a road underdog, K-State is 35-13 and 13 against the spread. 48 times as a road dog since 07. 35-13 and 13 against the spread. And regardless of whether they're home, away, or neutral, Bowl games, whatever. As an underdog, 73 times since midway through the 09 campaign, K State is 51 and 22 against the spread. I like them plus 11 at Iowa State in Ames. Cyclones hadn't beat them by more than 11 since 2005. So there's you some strategy for Florida Vandy. I'm not against the team totals over with Alabama this week either. But Kentucky does have a pretty good defense, so not as aggressively as with – not as much amount-wise with Florida because we're going against Vandy's defense. And um, the as, as long as weather.com's forecast is somewhat accurate 72 hours ahead of time, no rain and not even chilly temperatures. It's going to be in the low 70s early Saturday afternoon in Nash, Nash Vegas. So get on your Gators team totals over. Get on a mi minus 18 first half. Get on over 68 for the game. And get on K-State plus 11 at Iowa State. I'm Brian Edwards, MajorWager.com. Cash those winners, baby, over now.